Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, who they are according to the Bible. Um, we have a new program here on our nation. It's called Truth Shall Spring Out, Psalms 85 and 11. Right? Um, before we start, I'd just like to read this. It says, we are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a non-violent, Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat as stated in Leviticus 5 and 1. Shalom, shalom, O Christ of the Most High. Um, we are IOIC Grenada Camp and we're here to enlighten our brothers and sisters according to the truth. Um, read um, John 8, 32, to begin with. The book, the book of John chapter 8 and verse 32. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So according to the scripture, the scripture is saying, the most I speak to John, and John is saying, um, we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So let's get what is the truth, because a lot of our people, we tend to say the truth is their side of the story. But we need to hear what the most I say is truth. Because we suppose, as far as all people here on this island, they consider themselves to be a, a Christian nation. So we need to prove everything according to the scripture. The scripture say, prove all things, right? Bring it up. The book of Psalm, chapter 119, verse 142. Mm -hmm. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So uh, thy law is the truth. The law of the Most High is the truth. So what we're going to bring out here to you is basically the laws of the Most High. And we have fallen from the laws of the Most High, hence the reason why we are in that particular predicament that we are in up to this day. Right? We are in the, in, in the, the parish of St. John's, Guav. Guav in St. John's, right? And it's a... It's a a popular fishing village and if we examine the the conditions or the state of the of the community in itself yes fishing generates a lot of fun but we're not really seeing the effect of that also you can look through the tongue and check at least about 16 through the community about 16 churches and we haven't seen no changes in in, in the past years that the church has already made to and with our people so we're going to go into the scripture and identify ourselves as the children of Israel according to the scripture. So let's get to Deuteronomy chapter 28. So in the book of Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28 is basically a roadmap telling us who we are. We can identify ourselves with. So listeners, what we'll advise you to do is get your Bible, your pens and your paper. Also, you could call in, ask questions or leave comments. We welcome all of this. Because we are both our people, 
and we like to give clarity according to the scripture. So we'll answer whatever questions or comments that you have pertaining to the scripture. Because we are the people of the book, and this book was written by our forefathers to be the children of Israel. Let's read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So the Mosa is saying that he's going to set us on high above all nations of the earth once we hearken. Hearken means to listen. But let's go to Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 1, verse 1. To see who Moses, the audience that Moses was speaking to. Because Moses was speaking to a particular audience of people. Now people will, will have a problem with us going to um, the Old Testament. But remember, the prophets, Christ and the prophets was only teaching what? The Old Testament. The New Testament only take effect when Christ was crucified. So Christ taught the, New Te the Old Testament. Paul and all the apostles they taught the Old Testament. In order to know where you're going, you must go back to the history. You need to search the history. The history will identify who you are and who are the people that the Bible is speaking to and speaking about. So let's go into it. Read. So we, we, we're going to identify who Moses, our forefather, was speaking to. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses speak unto all Israel. So who Moses was speaking to? Unto all Israel. All Israel. Which we, the Israelites are, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, according to the Bible. So let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 20 and read one again, verse 1 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou wilt hearken diligently unto mm. the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments. So we have to observe and do all his commandments. If you search in the dictionary, you will find commandment mean laws. Go on. Which I command thee this day, mm -hmm. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. So presently, we are not above all nations of the earth. Why? Jump to verse 15. Let's jump straight to verse 15. Remember, we're going to jump through this. We're going to go different verses in order to bring out the points that we really want to hit. Because we want this thing to really resonate with our people that they will get the understanding and they, they have that kind of self within the scripture because the scripture really identifies to us as a people. And through all the ages, we have been out in Christianity. We have been out in all these churches, so-called churches outside here. And we could, have, we could have never identified ourselves according to the scriptures. Hence the reason why you will see all this, this lawlessness taking place in our communities. Because if we could have identified ourselves with the book and, and with the people of the book, then we would have been able to make certain changes. We would have been able to do certain things. Because we would have hold ourselves accountable according to the scripture. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Hold on. So... From verse 1, we jump to verse 15 because why? Verse 15 is a flip side to verse 1. Verse 1 said, if we hearken, if we listen, we will be above all nations of the earth. Once we keep God's commandments. Here in verse 15, it says here, read again. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, mm -hmm. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So he's telling you, if you don't listen unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Don't. To observe to do all his commandments. To observe and to do all his commandments. So observing means to apply his commandments. Go on. And his statutes, which I command thee this day. Statutes day, is conditional laws. Go on. That all these curses. All these what? Curses. All these curses. Go on. Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So these curses that came upon us and overtake us have us in a particular predicament that we are in right now. We are not ruling all nations of the earth. As, as it was written in, De in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Right now we are at the bottom of all nations on the earth. And we're going to get into that as we go further down. Re um, um, jump to um, 27. Verse 27. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt, mm -hmm. and with the emeralds, mm -hmm. and with scar, mm -hmm. and with itch, wherewith thou cannot be healed. So here's the reason you'll see some of our people have some of our ladies who have alopecia. Some of our people who have all different particular types of sickness. And we cannot be healed from this sickness. All this stem from we breaking God's laws. So let's jump to verse, um, verse 32. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. Thy sons... So hold on. Let me set it up. I want, us, I want people or, or listeners outside there who are the son of our voice. Listen. 
identify what is taking place. And let's see which people on the earth that what we're going to read has really happened to. Because we can identify ourselves with it. Right? Read. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So which nationality or which nations of people on the earth, sons and daughters was given to another people? That's a big question. Read. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So if all people tend to look at movies and all this thing, when you look at roots, when you look at um then some of the other 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 um 12 years of slavery. 12 years of slavery, all this thing we can see. Those things happen to us as a particular people. We've been out into slavery. We've been sent out into slavery because we break God's laws. Our children was taken from us, ain't it? From our four parents. And even up to this day. Right? This is happening to our brothers and sisters in in Mexico, right? So let's read that again. Read from the top again. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So we was given unto another people. We wasn't given to our brothers and sisters. We was given to another people. So as we go down in the scriptures, we'll identify who is these other people that we were given to. Read. Mm -hmm. Hold on. When it says another people, it means like another race of people. Exactly. Another race. Another race of people. Because when, when you, you, you consider what um, would have happened through history, when you look at, at what happened to our people, we were given unto another race, a totally different race of people. So just, just bring that in. Read. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. And then, and then I shall look and feel with longing for them all the day long. So let's let, let's make it let's make it a little more plain. Let's make it a little more vivid, right? Now, when our four parents got off the cargo slave ships, be it in St. George's, Grenville, or which part of the island, even, or even on the West Coast Wall. You understand? Because we don't have the record to say definitely the slave ship pulled up in these different places. But let's imagine when the slave ship pulled up and the slave master brought us in the market in St. George's and decided to sell our people an auction block. You could imagine a father was taken with his wife and children. Did the father have any power to stop the slave master from selling his daughter, his wife to, to somebody else and they were selling him to another person? No. Read that scripture again. Verse 32. Mm-hmm. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So he was given unto another nation of people, go on. And thine eyes shall look and feel with longing for them all the day long. So our eyes look and feel with longing for them because why? When they separated us as, as families to different parts of the island, to different plantations, we, ha we couldn't see our children. You could imagine your child was taken away from you or as a husband, your wife was taken away from you and, se and sent to another part of the island. So your eyes look and fail for long, and every day you get up, you yawn to see your family, but you couldn't see them. These are the things that was happen that was happening to us as a people when we got up here, because we are awful parents, believe it or not. According to the scriptures, we are awful parents, right? Um, read. And there shall be no might in thy hand. And we had no might in our hands. We had no military might. We had no economic might. We had no monies to free them. We had no armies to free them. Look at this. Um... Who, who, um, uh, Maurice Bishop Maurice Bishop rise up and said he wanted to free and save his people, help his people but lo and behold he couldn't he got so far, but what happened the same powers that be infiltrated and, and, and stopped the whole process be it, be, listen, he wasn't doing it according to the scriptures but at least he had that mindset of, of his people, of, of this kind of longing to his people where that he can go and help his people read um, jump down to 37. Verse 37. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt become an astonishment, mm -hmm. a proverb, and a byword. So we become an astonishment, right? Why? We are God's chosen people. As he said in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, that we will be above all nations of the earth. We will rule everybody on the earth. But the, con the present condition and state of mind that we are in today, are we in the state of mind where we can rule everybody and anybody on the earth? No, we are not. Because we don't have that kind of a, we don't have that, that understanding, we don't have that kind of um, structure. Because our slave masters have taken away our heritage, our laws, all our customs that was given to us according to the scriptures and has fed us with lies and fallacies. Right? Yeah, Read it again. And some of those lies and fallacies goes into stuff like, um, like the, the democratic system or the electoral system. It goes into the religion because they don't want us to unify as a people. They, 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 they will remove that 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 um that unity that that's there and give us something that can divide us as it says in Zephaniah 
to one when it says for the people to gather together. So so let's get that. Sorry, yeah. Let, let's, let's just get that. Zephaniah 2, 1 and 2. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. So it never says gather together as a political party. It never says gather together on the religion. It says gather together, O nation, not desire. We are the nation that is not desired. They, they, they will have us around to do the work, to do the, 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 the small works around the, um, their area, to build up the economy. But we as a people, we need that, that sort of unity. We need to gather together under the scripture, under Christ. Read. Before the decree bring forth, uh -huh. before the, the day pass as a chaff, right. before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. The fierce anger of what? Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Before the Mosai put that judgment on us, we need to gather together as a people. Not gather together as Grenadians and Trinidadians. That's another separation. Gather together as the Israelites, because that's who we are. Twelve tribes of Israel. So-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. So, before we go back to Deuteronomy 20, let's get Job chapter 8, verse 8, we read down to 10. Because, as the officer said, we have to gather as a nation of people. But some of our, some of our listeners might say, why are you going back to this and why are you going back to this? But we have to identify ourselves with the scripture, with our forefathers, right? In order for we to know where we are going and for we to raise our kids in a proper way that our kids will have understanding of their heritage. Read book of Job, chapter 8 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. For inquire, I pray thee, mm -hmm. of the former age. So what we are doing when we go to Deuteronomy 28 and we go through like Leviticus 26 and many other scriptures, we are inquiring at the scripture. Right? And we are going back to the former age. Read. And prepare thyself to the search of thy fathers. So we're preparing our minds to the search of our fathers, our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which sprang out into the 12 tribes of Israel. So we have to go through that search in order to identify so that we can know we are of that race, we are of that um, nationality of, you know, of people. Go ahead. For we are but yes, of yesterday mm -hmm. and know nothing because our days upon the earth are a shadow. So we know nothing without the scriptures, right? So we need to go back to the scriptures and search and find out. The scriptures is our guideline. It's our manual which will guide us back as lost sheep, as what the scripture calls us, we are the lost sheep of the children of Israel. So it's only the scriptures that will be able to guide us with the men of understanding that the Messiah has set up in place that has guided us and taught us the word and continue to teach us the word. Right? So let's go back then. Return again. Return. Sorry. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Shall not they teach thee? So who have to teach us? Remember I mentioned our teachers has taught us and continue to teach us this word, teach us our nationality, who we are, so that we could have self-esteem, we could have um, we could um, have ownership, right? Read. And tell thee, mm -hmm. and utter words out of their, their heart. Utter words out of their heart, because our heart has to be aligned according to God's word. Our heart, according to the Bible, is our mind. And we can prove all this according to the scripture. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. We left the thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, and verse thirty-seven. And thou shalt become an astonishment. So we became an astonishment because we are the people that are supposed to rule this earth. We're supposed to rule all nations, but we are at the bottom of society. Any part of the earth our people go, these curses are following us anywhere that we go. Because why? We are the people of the book, and this this curses came upon us because. God has chosen us as a people. Let's, let's pause here for a minute. Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 6. Because God, Deuteronomy 6? Seven. 7. Because God has chosen us as a special people above every nation of the earth. So hence the reason why we will get special judgment, special punishment. It's just as you have your kids, you leave chores for them to do, whatever chores you leave in the home for them to do, when you get back home and they didn't do it, they didn't perform the chores, there will be some form of repercussion, some punishment will take place. The Mosa is punishing us because we break his laws already. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 15. So we want our people to listen. Take your pen, your pencils. We are Israel united in Christ. IRS is in a camp, right? So we need you to listen and tune in. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. 
So we are in holy people unto the Lord thy God. Holy means separate, set apart. We are a set apart people. We are separate and holy people. Go on. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to mm -hmm. be a special people unto himself. So we didn't choose ourselves to be special people. God chose us to be special people. Read. Above all people. That Above who? All people. Above some people. All people. All people. Read. That are upon the face of the earth. That are upon the face of the earth. So we are above everybody on the earth. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. The book of Deuteronomy. Read again the astonishment. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, mm -hmm. a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall Hold on. Let, Let's read it again. Take it slow. And, and, and thou shalt become an astonishment. So when these other nations come among us, be it cruise ship, be it whatever they, came, they come in with, they look at us, oh, these are the children of Israel. So they are astonished at the condition that we're living in, the way that we deal with one another. We as ourselves will be astonished to see how we deal with one another as a people. We deal lawless against our people. Read Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Because the Most High has given us the, the guidelines as to how we're supposed to deal with one another as a people. We're supposed to keep God's laws with one another. Not have hatred for one another. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So we're not supposed to hate our brother in our heart. Not because your brother might have something more than you. Or you might, you might have more than him. You're not supposed to hate your brother. Not because of his skin tone or, or his hair texture. You understand? We're not supposed to hate one another. Read. Thou shall in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. We're supposed to rebuke our neighbor, which is to correct our neighbors. This is what we set out here to do, to bring the understanding of who we are and point out where our brothers and sisters, we as a people, need correction. And we need correction from the laws of the Most High. Read. And not suffer sin upon him. So by we correcting our brothers and sisters, we will suffer sin upon him. Like you see a sister in sin, you say, sis, this is wrong according to such and such scripture, and we need to live according to the word. We are the princesses and kings of, and prince of the Most High, so we're supposed to live according to what the guidelines that the Most High has laid down for us. Read. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. So we're not supposed to bear any grudges against the children of who? Of thy people. Of thy people. Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as so thyself. Your neighbor is your people. Your neighbor is not anybody that come and live next door to you, any of the other nations. Your neighbor is your people. So when we walk in the street and hating one another, are we fighting and killing one another over what? Over petty squabbles? All this is against the most high laws. So we need to come out of that kind of mindset. But the way that we need to that we have to start to come out of that mindset is to do what? Repent. Repent means to change. But first of all, you have to know that you are the children of Israel. You're supposed to take up that ownership. A lot of people do not want to hear that because why? If you know that you are the children of Israel, you will know that there are certain things that are required of you. Then no, fingers will be pointing at you. You will have to guide people. You will have to teach people. You will have to show people love according to the scripture. Not love as so-called Christianity has said to us. Hugs and kisses. No. Love is the keeping of God's laws. Let's, pr let's prove that. Uh, speak about that, please. Let's prove that. Because let's say prove all things. We need to wake up. We need to understand who we are. We are our four parents. Our four parents that was dropped off here and the cargo slave ship who was sold in St. George's Market. A lot of people up and down in St. George's Market be selling up and down. Because remember, the buses used to park there to go all different parts of the island, right? And all people, I'm sure a lot of our people did not know there's a plaque on the outside of, of, the, of the market that tells you that they used to sell all our people there. Right? And if you check all the different islands within our, our, our Caribbean region, these same things occur to our people on all these islands. So our people that is listening could identify to the same things that took place on these islands with them. Let's read the scripture. The book of 2 John, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And this is love. Mm -hmm. That we walk after his commandments. And what? This is love that we do what? That we walk after his commandments. Uh -huh. This is a commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, mm -hmm. you should walk in it. You should walk in it. Let's get the next one. Let's get the next one. Right? So we should walk in the commandments which I've heard from the beginning. Speaking of Genesis, the beginning. Read the book of First John chapter 5 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. For this is the love of God. Yes, 
the book of first john chapter 5 and verse 2 by this we know that we love the children of god as it says in leviticus 19 this we know how we love the children of god read when we love god when we love god and what and keep his commandments and keep his commandments so that's how you show love according to the scripture by loving god and keeping of the commandments read verse 3 for this is the love of god uh -huh. that we keep his commandments and it's so it's so beautiful the scripture explains everything he says because it tells you how you love the children of god and how you love god in the verse right below so it says for this is the love of god that what that we keep his commandments so when, when all people like say that that they love god oh i love god and oh i love jesus and they're not keeping commandment one they are liars because the bible says for you to love god and for you to love your own people you have to keep the commandments of god read and his commandments are not grievous his commandments shouldn't be something hard for you to do you shouldn't find issues with you loving your neighbor as yourself you shouldn't find issues with you not 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 loving your own people you should, you should see beauty in that. You're supposed to want to love your people, want to take care of your people. Because that's, that's what the Bible is all about, unity. All right. So you, should be, you, you shouldn't be killing your brother. You shouldn't be committing adultery with your brother's wife. Uh, you understand? These things are, are not loving your brother. You shouldn't want to see your brother fall. You well, understand? Well, as you, you talk about, um, as you spoke about adultery, because... One of the things that, that, that our people have, one of the, the, the plights of our people is that some of the men think that when they are men, if they have six and seven women. Because they think, because society has taught them that that's the way that, 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 that you should grow up. The men should have one, a woman in every village. But that's not the way that this, the, the Bible says that we're supposed to live. You remember that thing you post on, on, on our medium the other day where... Um, the how much things that happened to the slaves, the men, yeah. the men slaves. Uh, like one of the things that happened to, to the slaves. Yeah. You understand? Because remember there was there's forcing some of the men to have sex maybe with six or seven women per day, you know, trying to increase the uh, and the pregnancy rate. Why? They saw us as other people as commodities, they didn't see us as as human beings. So all they saw us like swine, cow, goats. So all they were trying to do is increase their stock. So let's go back to the scripture. Where we were? Uh, yeah, read, read 3 again. First John chapter 5 verse 3. Read that again. The book of First John mm -hmm. chapter 5. And remember, three. this is New Testament. So all people like to dwell, oh, the New Testament, the Old Testament was done away with. We are reading New Testament, which is telling you what is love according to God. Because all people tend to love to use the word love, love. We just need love. Let us hear what is the love that we need. Read. The book of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. For this is the love of God. Yeah. That we keep his commandments. So it's stipulating this is the love of God. So if I'm in St. George's and I say, if you see that number, that number 5 bus, this is a bus that goes to Guav. We know definitely that bus goes to Guav, ain't it? So this is the love of God. Read. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments, which, which equates to laws, read. And his commandments are not grievous. They are not hard to do. They are not hard. We as a nation of Israel need to come back to these laws because these laws were only given to us as a people. Let's prove that too. Let's prove that too. Well, be honest. Psalms 147. Psalms 147. Let's get that scripture and prove it. And note, we're going to go to the Bible and we're going to constantly use scriptures. To prove what we are saying. This is the day that our people start to wake up. Wake up. Come back to your nationality. Get the understanding of who you are. What is yours. Stop fighting over a corner. Stop fighting over an acre of land. You understand? Let us fight for our nation. And our laws. We are not saying let's fight over a flag or a color. No. We are fighting for the nation of Israel. The children of Israel, which are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, according to the Bible. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. Mm -hmm. He showed his word unto Jacob. So God showed his word unto Jacob, which Jacob is the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. Read. His statutes. And his statutes, which is sub-laws. Go on. And his judgment. And his judgment for breaking his laws. You commit adultery, there is a judgment for committing adultery. 
You steal some money, think there's a judgment for stealing. You're covetous, there's a judgment for stealing. You're breaking the Sabbath by buying and selling and cooking on the Sabbath, there's a judgment for that. I know, I know some of our people, some of our people might find oh, cooking, so what are we going to eat? In order to keep the Sabbath holy, these are things that we need to do. Read. He showed his word unto Jacob, mm -hmm. his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. His statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He had not done so with any nation. So note, he started from Jacob and he tell you come down to Israel. With Jacob is the father of the twelve tribes of Israel. He started on his judgment. Read. Read it again. He showed his word unto Jacob, mm -hmm. his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Uh -huh. He has not dealt so with any nation. He has not dealt so with no other nation on the earth. No other nation. We have to let these things ring a bell in our minds. This has not happened to nobody else on the earth. But yet for all, we tend to go and sit down in the sofa churches and clap and sing and not open the book. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out in the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.